uh, is also acknowledging uh, a difference in status, if you like. I'm not saying that cats have a mental conception, an abstract mm -hmm. conception of status, mm -hmm. but they clearly do need to indicate the type of interaction they want to happen. So what they're saying is I'm friendly towards you, and I acknowledge that you are in some way bigger or smarter than, than I am. Studying feral cats has given us more than new insights into their social relations. <laughs> DNA from various species of cats. Wild, so feral and domestic, large and small, from all over the world. Help solve the mystery of how cats evolved and eventually became domesticated. That's a Norway forest. So for wild cat, the ancestor of the domestic cat is a species called Felis sylvestris. Felis sylvestris <laughs> is a very broad range of species that ranges all the way from the tip of Scotland down to <laughs> the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, all the way from Portugal out to the center of China. And there are five different wild subspecies of Felis sylvestris. <laughs> He's so confused. One of those subspecies, Felis sylvestris lipica, lived in the Near East, and it's that subspecies that gave rise to the domestic cat. <laughs> Professor Driscoll pinpointed this part of the Mideast as the center where Felis sylvestris lipica <laughs> gradually transformed into the familiar kitty, Felis cats. Domestic cats of every breed, friendly or feral, Wherever in the world you find them, have their genesis here. <laughs> their wildcat ancestors can still be spotted outside the cities. So confused. 